Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have an exciting tutorial for complete beginners who want to dive into the world of UI design. In this video, I'll guide you through a step-by-step -step process on how to recreate this beautiful jewelry landing page by Aisha Sadika. My name is Jacqueline and this is Ikea Designs. Before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Now, let's get started. We'll start off by creating our frame, so press F on the keyboard and select desktop from the preset that appears on your right. Then double click to rename the frame. The first thing we'll do is to create the navbar, but before we do that, we'll add a column grid to our frame. Select the frame, click on the plus icon by the layout grid, click on the square box and change it from grid to column. Set the margin to 100 and increase the count to 12. Then you can choose the color if you want but we'll maintain the red and reduce its opacity. To make sure we are 100% not designing in our margins, we'll create our guides by dragging the guide from the rule to one end of the margin and then drag another one to the other end of the margin. We can now proceed to designing our navbar. The first thing we're going to have to look for is a logo. So you go to the resource tab, switch to plugins and then search logo Ipsum. Click on run to load the plugin. Once it's loaded, you can search for any logos you like to use in your project. In this project, we'll choose this logo. To make our logo slightly unique, we'll add a text to it. Select both the text and icon and press Shift A to add an auto layout. Then rename the auto layout group. To make sure both our text and logo become one, we'll select them both and add a union selection from the boolean menu and then flatten it. Next thing we're going to do is to create the menu items. To do that, we'll activate the text tool by pressing T on the keyboard and then typing the first menu which is home, then adjust its font. We'll duplicate our text by pressing command D and then type our new menu item which is collection. We'll duplicate the collections and type new and then duplicate the new and type pricing. We'll select all four text and make sure they're well tidied up and then change the font to open sans and adjust its size and font width. We'll slightly drag it to make sure that it's well aligned with the logo then press shift A to add an auto layout. Then we'll rename the auto layout group. Next, we'll create the shop button. To do that, we'll press the O on the keyboard and then draw an overall. Then we'll add a stroke and remove the fill. Finally, we'll slightly rotate it to the left. Then we'll duplicate one of the menu item text, drag it out and then bring it into the overall. Double click and retype shop. We we'll select both the text and the shape. Make sure that the text is centered and press Shift A to add an auto layout. Then rename the auto layout group. We we'll select the button, the text, and the logo, and press Shift A to add an auto layout. Then center the auto layout and finally rename the auto layout group to navbar. Next, we're going to create this green background. To do that, we'll activate the rectangle tool by pressing R on the keyboard and then drawing a rectangle in our frame. Then we'll send it to the back. Click on the square box under the fill and using the color picker, pick the color from the design. This is the hex code of the color. Next thing is to change our navbar color so that we can see its content. So using the color picker tool again, we'll pick the color from the design. And this is the color code. 
next thing is to create our image so to do that we'll activate the rectangle tool once again by pressing r and then creating a small rectangle we'll then go to the resource tab and search the unsplash plugin and click run to load it once it's loaded we we'll just search an image of a necklace with the shape we want the image to load in selected we'll just click on the image we want Remove the extra fill and crop our image slightly. To create the play button on the image, we'll activate the ellipse tool and then create a small circle. Change its color and then select the polygon tool from the shapes menu. While holding down shift, draw your triangle, flatten it and rotate it by minus 90 degrees. Finally, change its color to white. Make sure the polygon is well centered on that circle and select both the circle and the polygon and press Command J to group them. Then rename the group. Add an overlay to the image by clicking the plus beside the fill and then reduce the intensity of the color added. Then select both the play icon and the image and press Command J to group them. The next thing we're going to do is to design the text with a ring. To do that, we're going to activate the text tool by pressing T on the keyboard, click anywhere in our frame and start typing out our text. We'll then increase the font size and change the font. Then finally, change the color of the text. Load the Unsplash plugin once again and search for a ring image. Make sure nothing is selected in our canvas and click on the desired ring image we want. Once our ring image is loaded, we'll press K and scale it down. Search for icons 8 background remover and run it whilst our image is selected. Once our image background is removed, we'll crop it a bit and then adjust the size to make it smaller to fit with the text. Let's preview it to see how it looks so far. To do that, we'll select the frame and press shift space bar and then we have our preview of our design. Next, we're going to create this image section. We'll activate our rectangle tool once again by pressing R and then create our rectangle in our frame. We'll adjust our rectangle size and then round its corners. Going back to the resource tab, we'll load the Unsplash plugin once again. And this time we'll search the image of rings and then scroll till we find an image we want to use and then click on the image to load it into our shape. So the next thing is to duplicate our image by pressing command D and then select the duplicate and rename it then go to the fill and remove the image option. We'll tilt the shape slightly and then add a stroke and remove the fill. Then change the color of the stroke. Press O on the keyboard, hold down shift and create a circle. Then we'll add a stroke, increase the stroke width to 2 and change its color. And finally change the color of its fill. We'll press T and add our text to the circle. And then we'll adjust our test properties, including the font and the size. So make sure the text is center aligned in the circle and then press Command J to group them. Next thing we're going to do is to create the stars. To do that, we'll select 
the star tool hold down shift and create our star and then reduce the number of legs to adjust the size press enter to enter the vector mode and select the four points in the corners and round the point finally we'll change the color of the star to reduce the size of the star once again press command d to create a duplicate and then drag the duplicates to the corner of the image next we're going to create this menu on the right we'll press t on the keyboard and start typing out our text Next, we'll change the color of our text and adjust its position. We'll duplicate the text and type the next text. Then we'll continue to finish typing all the text needed for that menu. We'll select all the text and make sure that they are evenly spaced and then reducing the space between them. Next, we'll select the new collection text and increase its fonts. Then press L on the keyboard to draw a line and change the color of the line. Now select both the line and the text and add an auto layout. Center it and increase the spacing between them. We'll select all the text once again and make sure they're evenly distributed. Text still selected, we we'll press Command G to group them. To load our Lorem Ipsum plugin, and then press T on the keyboard, press anywhere, and generate our number of sentences we'd like. We will select the auto height and adjust the width to 400. Reduce its size. We will change the fonts and change its weight as well. And change its color. Our next thing will be to create the directional buttons. So to do that, we'll press P on the keyboard to activate the pen tool and then draw out our shape. Once we are done drawing our arrow, we'll press enter to leave the vector mode and increase the stroke width of the arrow and make sure we round our arrow ends. The next thing is to press O and then draw a circle. Then select the arrow and bring it to the front. Now select both, make sure the arrow is center aligned in the circle. Then group them. With the group selected, we'll change the color of the ellipse and then we'll change the color of the arrow. We'll adjust the position of the group and then reduce its size. Then press Command D or Control D to duplicate the group. Remove the duplicate towards our right and then select the arrow. Right click and flip it horizontally and change the color of the circle and the arrow. Press R on the keyboard and create a rectangle. Then we'll change its color. Press O on the keyboard and then draw your circle. Click on the plus to add a stroke and increase its width and change its color. Next, we'll use the Unsplash plugin to load an image into the ellipse. To create the text, press T on the keyboard and type out your text, then slightly adjust the text size. Search Arc in the plugin section and click on Run to load it. Select your text and adjust the settings. And once you're done with that, click on apply. You see that a new group is created. Move the group and delete the main text you created earlier. Now change the color of the new group and then copy the play button and paste it in this new group. Adjust it and change its color as well. Once you're done with all that, Select the group and drag it towards the image. Click on the image and bring it to the front so that the text will hover behind it. Now you can choose to rotate it if you want and then adjust the play button inside it. 
next thing we'll be doing is to create the slanted images so to do that we'll press R on the keyboard and draw a rectangle then adjust its position slightly and round the corners of our rectangle then we'll press enter to enter the vector mode and slant our rectangle by adjusting and moving the positions of our individual points once you're done with our adjustments, we'll press enter on the keyboard to exit the vector mode. Then we'll load the Unsplash plugin once again to get our image. Once we're done with that, we'll duplicate our image and then move it towards our right. Let's duplicate one of the texts, drag it down and change its color, then bring it to the front. Then we'll type out our new collection. Next, we'll create the statistics on the bottom right. To do that, we'll duplicate our text and type in our value, 12K. And adjust the test properties, including the size of the text. We'll then duplicate the paragraph text and drag it to the bottom. Change its color and type our text as well. Then select both the 12K text and the bottom text and press Shift A to add an auto layout. Next, we we'll duplicate the group and adjust our text. Then duplicate it once again and adjust our text once again. We'll select all our text, add an auto layout and adjust the spacing. We forgot to change our image in the second rectangle. So to do that, we'll load our Unsplash plugin once again and fill it with the needed image. Select our star too and then draw a star. Then we reduce the number of star legs. Press enter to enter the vector mode of the star. Click on the point and drag it downwards. Then change its color. Press O to activate the ellipse tool and create your circle. Then select both shapes and add an auto layout to it. Duplicate the shape and flip it vertically. So that's it guys, you successfully recreated this jewelry landing page. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching.